Well, hello, hello, and welcome back. Today, we're gonna to be talking about this guy, the double dash delimiter. So the double dash delimiter, it's easy to kind of show you what it is. I'm gonna use mkdir as an example. So if I wanted to create a directory, which that you're gonna do this by accident at some point, but if I, for some stupid reason, wanted to create a directory called dash p, I would not be able to do it because dash p is recognized as a flag by mkdir. So most programs, including mkdir, have a common convention of when they see a double dash, they then assume that they, they eat the double dash and then everything that comes after it, they only will parse as an argument, like a string, they will not parse it as a flag or an option to a flag. So if I do this, now, oh, except that it was already there, uh, so I probably have, <laughs> and of course, <laughs> yes, I cannot rm-rf because I, <laughs> it's named dash p. Okay, so case in point there. All right, so <laughs> let me get back to this. My mkdir dash 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 p. Blah, 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 blah. That's a tongue twister. Okay, so now if I want to get rid of this, as you just saw, I can't get rid of it by using dash p because that is an argument to, well, actually it's, uh, it's parsed as a flag, sorry, it's parsed as a flag to rm, but rm says, I don't understand this flag. So if I give it the dash dash, then it knows, oh, okay, I'm just gonna treat it as a string, as a file name or folder name that I gotta get rid of. And so then, then it does it just fine. So you can use these singularly, but sometimes you'll see them stacked. And what I mean by stacked is like, let me see if I can get this uh, back in my history a little bit. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and make that directory again. So I'm gonna make, and we're gonna do dash p foo, um, let's do foo bar baz. We're gonna make three directories inside of it. Okay, uh, and we need to give it the dash p, of course. There we go. So now, now we got this weird directory structure and I'm gonna have to use the dash dash with ls as well because if I did ls dash p, of course, you know, so you, as you, this is this is a great example just to show how well this is implemented across the board. Anyway, so if I wanted to use watch exec, let me go back up to that example. This is it. Okay, so what's going to happen here is we've got watch exec has a double dash, which it doesn't need it in this case. Um, but I'm putting it there anyway. I, it, I like whenever I have a program that runs another program, I always put the double dash because the stacking can go wrong, and you'll see that in just a second. Uh, so anyway, I've got watch exec. I, it's got a double dash and then go run has a double dash. So go is a command, run is an argument to that command and then double dash is saying don't parse anything after this as your own arguments. And then the thing that I'm running with go is exec.go which will just run something else. So this is very convoluted but it's to show that the point that you stack double dashes. So it has a flag to do and then it has a double dash that it eats and then it will run ls and then uh, ls has a double dash that it eats after its flags, and then finally is the directory named dash p. So super convoluted, but shows the point. And then what watch exec does, let me get over in the demo folder here. So if I do touch foo, then watch exec runs again. So all of these, all of these programs are just exec programs and they're stacking. Now what can happen sometimes is you get confused about where the double dash is being eaten. So if I were to do this, for example, it is possible that watch exec will read all the way up to a double dash and it will eat that double dash. And then go run will not have that double dash there. And it will read all the way up to say here and eat that double dash, which means that then um, exec will read all the way up to here and eat this double dash, which means that LS wouldn't get a double dash. Now in this particular case, it doesn't work that way. It's, uh, it's more intelligent, but you do run into cases where the parsers do not do the right thing and what the, what they'll do is they they will read um they will read flags after their own arguments and a good example of this is the way that linux mkdirp works versus the way that mac mkdirp works so if i do mkdir blah blah dash p on mac this gives me a failure it accidentally unexpectedly creates the dash p directory, but it doesn't create the, ba the blah blah directory. Whereas if I were to do that on Linux, it would do the same as this does on Mac. 
And the reason for this is that the Mac version of mkdirp has a BSD or Unix style command line parser, which means that all flags must come before any arguments. Whereas Linux has a more flexible GNU style parser, which means that flags can come after arguments. So for programs that have flexible parsers, uh, which Go is not, Go has a strict or BSD style parser. Um, but f for, for things that have the looser parsing format, the double dashes can get eaten in ways that you don't expect. So you just want to keep your eye on where is the double dash and which program in the chain is eating it because it might be eaten by something that you didn't expect. Well, I hope that helps. Be sure to like if you like, subscribe if you want more like this. And if you're interested in becoming a software engineer, check out Beyond Code Bootcamp in the link in the description below. And I will catch you next time. Adios.